everybody, welcome to Inside Quest. If you are joining us, I'm guessing it's because you, my friend, are on a mission and you have a vision of your life, not as it is, but as it could be. And our goal is to help you gain the skills that you'll need to cross that chasm to accomplish anything from the simple to the seemingly impossible. And the guests that we're bringing on the show, they are the people that we believe can deliver the insights and skills needed to translate your ideas into concrete reality. And that is the biggest thing for me, is to actually make this stuff real. It's not enough to dream, you've got to execute. So how is today's guest going to be able to help? Well, if I had to sum it up, uh, I think this guy can teach us how to build just about anything from scratch. Starting from absolutely nothing, he founded one of the most successful digital magazines on the planet. Through hustle and sheer determination, he built that magazine into a veritable digital empire that has attracted some of the world's most powerful entrepreneurs. Everyone from the ultra-established Richard Branson and Tony Robbins to new media moguls like Gary Vaynerchuk and Tim Ferriss have shared their secrets with him and graced the cover of his top 10 iTunes business and entrepreneurship magazine founder. But if you really want to lose your mind, take a look at his Instagram account and you will see what explosive growth really looks like. It's absolutely bonkers. He's taken that account from zero to nearly a million engaged followers in the blink of an eye. I'm incredibly jealous. Uh, and he's done all of that without any investors. And for the first over year of the business's life, he was still working a nine to five job. His story is one of self-generating escape velocity, of brick by brick building a life of what he calls total freedom. He's executed on the dream that so many people only fantasize about. Please help me in welcoming the founder of Founder Magazine, the host of the Founder Podcast, the self-made man himself, Nathan Chan. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. It's, oh. uh, it's an honor and for anybody that has seen your magazine but not heard your podcast, they may be surprised to hear that you're from Down Under. Mm. Yeah. So that was, uh, that was a lot of fun for me. I wasn't expecting that when we first connected. Uh, which, by the way, thank you for having me on your show, which is really fantastic. Uh, oh, one of the things that I respect about the show is it's hyper nuts and bolts, right? You're really trying to help people build a business. Um, so I think you're uniquely qualified for that. But for people to understand why, walk them through what was going on in your head when you decided to start this all. Yeah, so launched the magazine March 5th, 2013, so about three and a half years ago. And before that, um, I was just really struggling uh, with, with finding work that really fulfilled me. And I actually really wanted a job in marketing and uh, no one would hire me. <laughs> it's really crazy. How ironic now. I, I bet you could get one now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no problems yeah. at all. But um, back then, you know, it was really crazy. No one wanted to know me. Um, I went for even three different marketing jobs at the company that I was working at. And, you know, I wasn't working in marketing. I was doing this, this job in IT that I absolutely, utterly hated. Um, didn't know anything about business, didn't know anything about entrepreneurship. But I read Tim Ferriss's book, The 4-Hour mm. Workweek. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. This is probably about five years ago. And some things were seeded. And, and I really just wanted to do work that I was excited about. And uh, I'll never forget, you know, all the lead up, I'm just kind of sharing with you some of the lead ups to how it all started. Like, you know, I remember I was walking on the train to work and I remember thinking to myself, like, I know that I could do so much more. Mm. I remember being on the train going to work and it was just dead silent. You know, a train full of hundreds of people and be dead silent because everyone hated being there. And I was one of those people. And uh, I guess, you know, compiling all that together, there's something that was building up that, that I just, you know, I just had to find out what it took to become a successful entrepreneur. I had to find work that I really enjoyed. Mm. And, uh, you know, combining all that, I kind of launched the magazine. What was it about the four hour work week that impacted you? Because that had a big impact on me and I know that Tim has collected a lot of different stories. And it's really interesting to see how different things resonated with different people. What was it in the book that you, was a real takeaway for you? Yeah, I think the big takeaway from Tim's book was just around just, you know, you don't have to do the work that you might be doing at this point in time and you don't have to do what you're told. And, you know, the internet has changed the game. Like right now, we live in a time where there's no 
better time in history than to start a business and you can do it with little to no capital you can do it with no knowledge whatsoever i'm living proof of that and uh you know you can you can make a difference and you can do work that you enjoy yeah it's fun that Tim is sort of accidentally given uh, the the new world order that we live in, like this milestone, because you hear people reference his book a lot, and it really brings home what you were saying, which is that we live in a different time, and something that I hope you guys are all thinking about is um, no excuses, right? So one of the most profound things in his book is he talks about this concept of the nouveau riche. This is from Tim's book. Um, and saying that, hey, there's this new lifestyle. You don't need a lot of money to start your business. You can do it from practically anywhere. And if you really assess what you're trying to do with your life, you may not need as much money as you think you need. And then shows people how they can start companies with no money, right? That as long as your idea is strong enough, as long as it delivers value, that you can really do something. And that's, in essence, how you've built Founder Magazine up is by... I mean, your content's fantastic, right? And if your content wasn't fantastic, then it wouldn't go anywhere. Um, and, and there's some awesome parallels between uh, you and Richard Branson, who, with his student magazine that he launched, you know, going into a phone box and dropping quarters and, you know, just banging the phone until he got the advertisers and stuff that he needed. Um, and you literally stalked him and got him to invest. Tell us that story and, and what gave you the the guts to go after Richard Branson. I mean, this, this was long before things had really taken off for you. For some reason, I don't know why, but I, I, I developed this idea in my head that, uh, you know, maybe I should try and get Richard Branson on the magazine. Um, if I could, it would be a game changer. Right. And uh, I just went down this path of, of trying to find out how to get in touch with him. What that key thing that I learned was, you need to find people when they're looking for press and publishers are always looking for press for their books. And that's exactly what I did. I traced back, you know, Sir Richard Branson's head of PR and I called up on the phone and I'll never forget first four months in and a lot of calls too, you know, it wasn't just one call. It's, it was, you know, a lot of persistence. And I remember I left a lot of voicemails on this lady's phone and what ended up happening was I managed to catch her and I'll never forget, uh, she was just about to hop onto the tube. So she was head of PR for Virgin in London. She was about to hop on the tube and I said, oh, you know, I was so nervous, I was stumbling. <laughs> and I ran to my room in my bedroom and I said, um, you know, hello, my, my name's Nathan Chan. I run this magazine. And what well, actually wasn't called founder at the time. It was called something else. And that's a whole other story if you want to go down that path. Yeah, so I said, I'm, you know, Nathan from this other magazine. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, we've, uh, I'd, I'd love to feature Richard Branson. And uh, she, said, she said to me, uh, well, Nathan, please understand, you know, we get, we get pitched and called, like, asked this question at least 10 times a day. Um, how long have you been around for? And I said, oh, about four months. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, she said, oh, okay, wow, you, you guys are really new. And I thought, when she was saying that, I said, yeah, no chance it's going to happen. Right. And she said, okay, well, do me a favor, send me an email, and I promise I'll get back to you. It might be a while, but I'll get back to you. And I sent her a really good email, and I played on the fact that his first business venture, like you said, was a student magazine. I played on the fact that the magazine, what we're trying to do is, you know, educate the new leaders of tomorrow because we very, very much focus on young entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I pitched for a Skype interview, and uh, she come back to me a couple of weeks later and said, you know, um, you know, Sir Richard Branson's uh, really busy at the moment. He's he, I, I read the star of the email and I was like, oh, here we go. And, uh, you know, he's really busy at the moment. He's got a lot of travel. Um, he won't be able to do a Skype interview, but he's happy to do an email interview. And I just took that and ran with it. That was a pivotal turning point for us. Yeah, you've, uh, it's hilarious to me that you couldn't get a job as a marketer because one thing that you've proven that you're incredibly adept at is marketing and what you've done with the article that you did with Richard Branson's incredible. I know that you consider that a, a big turning moment, um, which is phenomenal. But to walk me through, so what I can't 
when I talk to people that are considering a business uh, and they put it off, they put it off, they put it off because they're waiting for some sort of magic moment, lightning falling from the sky, someone to anoint them and say, yes, you're meant to start a business or whatever. Um, you didn't do that. You didn't wait. You're very scrappy. You get on the phone. Like, where does all that persistence come from? Is it something that you've cultivated? Do you have self-talk? Is there a book that you read? I mean, like, yeah. it's your, your success seems to be a direct result of actions you've taken. Yeah, I think um, first things first, Tom, I, in the early days, even before I wanted to even start a business, I actually did a lot of work on myself, on, on finding out who I was and, and what I wanted from life. And I think that work that I did, you know, reading a lot of books about, you know, personal development and even doing things like, you know, crazy things like men's work, like you know, masculinity workshops, trying to find my life's really? purpose. Yeah, I did a lot of things on myself before I even looked at entrepreneurship or anything of the sort. Just really try to get to know who I was and what I wanted from life. Whoa, tell me about that. I've never even heard of that. Yeah, so this is really weird. Um, because I'm not a very, you know, big kind of masculine kind of guy, I never really felt like a man, like when I was a lot younger. And um, I don't know why, but I, f I started, you know, researching some of this stuff. And, and there's actually a, a lot of information on this stuff. And uh, I ended up starting to read a lot of books about masculinity and what it means to become a man. And there's some incredible books out there, one in particular called The Way of the Superior Man by David Data. Have you heard of that book? I haven't, no. No, so incredible book. I started doing a lot of reading, doing a lot of research, and um, even met this guy on the train. His name was Tony. He um, just ran up to me and said, oh, hey, that's a really good book. You should read this book around, like, men's work. And I was like okay, well, thanks, you know, thanks, you know, and he's like, oh, you know, my name's Tony, and I said, what do you do? And he said, oh, you know, I'm a director at um, you know, this organization for the government, but my real purpose is actually to help people find their life purpose. Wow. And um, he gave me his card, and I just, I just kind of sat, it just sat with me in my bag. And then probably about six months later or, or you know, a little while later, I thought, you know what, I'm going to actually contact this guy and, and see if he can help me find my life purpose. So maybe he's like a life coach or, or something. I don't know what you want to call it because I know life coaches can be a little bit <laughs> woo -woo and stuff. Sure. But I contacted him and, um, you know, we went through this process over about a couple of months and he mm. really, um, he gave me all these exercises and all sorts of things and uh, it was absolutely game changing. And, and this is just one instance of the kinds of things that I did even before I started Founder, which I think has really helped me bring a lot of clarity because once I did find that thing that I just fell in love with, mm. it just sparked this hunger and this fire to just, it doesn't feel like work, Tom. And it's just, you know, even when I was pitching for the Richard Branson piece, getting back to what you said, what, where does this come from? It's just like this hunger, this deep desire. It's kind of like, this is what I was born to do. And that there's nothing holding me back that can stop me. Like, I just know that, you know, I don't care what, what people think. I don't care if it doesn't work out. I don't care if I fail. It's like, I'm just going to go for it and give it my best. And, and that's just where it comes from, I guess. <laughs> I, so that's amazing. Uh, a million people met that same guy in the train. He handed that card to a lot of people. But you actually did something with it, which is really, really powerful. And so when you come out the other side, what is it that you realize is either a full realization of your purpose or the beginning of something? What was that? Yeah, so I remember at the end of it all, once we were all said and done, you said this is the last session, and I remember even saying to him, because he got me to fill out some questions and answers, I remember reading it out to him and saying that um, I'm a lot more comfortable with my journey and I know that I'm not where I'm supposed to be right now, but I know I'm on the path to finding it. Mm. And I just remember that that's kind of where we left things and um, not long later, you know, about a year later, I ended up starting Founder. 
So what do you start chasing then after that? So you know I'm on the right path, but what's the thing that was making you take a step forward? Was it an interest in publishing? Because I know it, you actually tried another business, which was sort of um, short-lived, yeah, great-smellingcologne.com yeah, yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that uh, wasn't even a real business. Right? And then the first iteration of Founder was almost a horse magazine. And so what, what were those early steps, which I think people could learn a lot from? I guess the thing that people could take away from that is, you know, I guess um, just putting yourself out there and, you know, to start the magazine, it cost me three grand, you know, purchasing that publishing software that cost me two grand. And then it was about one grand to get that first issue up. So I think the first thing you can do if people want to get started is make yourself financially accountable. Um, So for me, I put two grand on my credit card, didn't have any money at the time and just financially back myself. And I started telling people about you know, this magazine I was working on, even my family. So if you actually talk about it to other people and make yourself accountable that way, it's, it kind of pushes you because yeah. you, you don't want to be one of those people that just is all talk. And then putting a financial wager on yourself, I think is a great way to get started. So, okay, so we start doing the first, first issue. issue. Yeah. You get that put together. Things start not going so well. Uh, um, and somebody said that, like, there's a lot of podcasts out there that have three episodes and then people just stop. Mm. Why didn't you stop? Because you got sued, which isn't like, hey, it's just not going well. It's yeah. like, I'm being aggressively, <laughs> someone is trying to shut me down. So, walk us through that. And then, mentally, what are you doing to yourself to push through that? Yeah, so. First four months in, I just landed the interview, Richard Branson, and I remember waking up not a couple of weeks later, and I checked my laptop, like, you know, had my day job, do a little bit of work every morning before I go to work, check my email, and I had this email from this guy from Dallas, Texas, this lawyer saying, you know, hey, Nathan, if you didn't know this, you know, you're being sued by this company for trademark infringement. And um, he's like, you know, I think I can defend you. You might have a case here and all this stuff. And I was just freaking out because I didn't know (laughs) whether this was real. I didn't even get a cease and desist. They just literally went straight to serving me and Mm. and, and filing uh, that suit. And um, what ended up happening was, ended up just having to change the name. But what I was going through at the time was, first of all, I never thought it would happen to me. So if you ever think, if you ever think to yourself, oh, maybe that might happen to you, oh, no, it never will. You know, why would it happen to me? It will. It's just such a traumatic feeling because you think you're going to go bankrupt. You can, it's just such a terrible feeling. Like, I don't know. Success attracts that kind of drama, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. So it was, in the end, um, pretty easy because it, it happened early on. So we just changed the name and just updated um, the past five issues of the magazine and kept moving. Yeah, and you've kept moving really, really fast. Walk me through how you've built the company um, as just incredibly, incredibly fast as you have. And I'd love to hear about your sort of, um, you're not romantic about how you make your money. So you test, you pivot, you test, you pivot. Yeah, so my big thing, right, Tom, is focus. Um, and and when I was in my day job, it took me about 14, 12, 14 months to, to, to leave. And the thing, the one on, only thing that I focused on was the magazine. We didn't have a social media presence. We didn't even have a blog. We didn't even write content, which is kind of crazy looking back. I just was focused on the magazine, mastering that. And once I built it up, I could replace my income, replace the operating cost of the magazine. I just left my job. And then the next piece of the puzzle was, what do we master next? You know, we did a good job, we're doing a good job with the magazine, what can we master next? And what happened was a few things, we rolled out a new website, we started you know, producing content uh, for the blog and for the website, and then uh, started to try and you know, master social. And uh, what ended up happening was I stumbled upon Instagram and, that was just, uh, you know, I had a few friends that were doing some cool things on Instagram. By that stage, I had a lot of entrepreneurial friends. And what year is this? Uh, this would have been about 18 months in, 18 months in. So, so we're into 2014 at this 2014, point. 2014, yeah, end of 2014. 
Um, we launched the podcast in November, so I realised that you know we've got all these amazing interviews in the magazine locked up because if you read the magazine, you can also play, press play and listen to the interviews. And I had all these amazing interviews locked up. Let's just put them out and repurpose them and repurpose that content. And so the podcast was one thing that we started working on. The blog was another thing. But then Instagram, that's been a massive growth channel for us. And like you said, just test. Um, you know, I was testing all these other social channels. Um, I know Facebook has been massive for you guys. Facebook, for us, you know, for generating organic likes and driving traffic hasn't been we've never been really successful with. But with Instagram, I did a couple of posts and I saw our Google Analytics spike. And that took me down this path of just battle testing the crap out of Instagram. And, you know, I think really good marketing is just throwing things against the wall, seeing what sticks. And then once you find something that sticks, just doubling down on that channel, mastering that channel, and then moving on to the next channel. Mm -hmm. And right now, a channel that we're focusing on is Snapchat, but also content marketing with the blog so that's kind of how we build like you know just master one channel at a time master one thing at a time we got really good with the magazine then i realized you know having the magazine is a great way to get interviews with all these influencers in the entrepreneurship space um, people take you a lot more seriously if you're a magazine and then we're going to use that to build a podcast and then we're going to use that to build the brand because you you know, people people will trust what we do more if we showcase Richard Branson everywhere or Seth Godin or Tony Robbins or, you know, Ariana Huffington because it's like if you ever stumble across the brand at any point in time, we have these ambassadors. Like you guys have your ambassadors. We have these ambassadors essentially that's like, okay, you see Richard Branson's face, like boom, all right, these guys must be legit. And you couple that with great design and great content and you've got a great product. And, um, you know, that's what we did with the magazine, we did with the podcast, and then we found it with Instagram, and we just kind of move, move across and just keep mastering all these channels. What I love about that is um, your whole story, when you put it into one package, to me at least, goes something like this. You're not, you know, born into bazillion dollars, so it's, it's really about identifying the things um, inside you that you, you did the work on you first, right? So exploring who am I, what am I trying to accomplish? Uh, you realize if you're really going to be committed to something, you need to understand what it exactly is that you want, what your purpose is. You actually pursue that, which is incredible, and I don't think most people do. You come out the other side of that understanding, okay, I'm on the right path, but I don't, I'm not where I want to be yet, but I need to keep going. And then from there becomes a game of experimentation. And the reason that all of that is important, the reason that I, I hope you guys are listening is no matter what you're trying to accomplish in your life, right? Everybody that you meet, there's something unique about them. There's something unique that they're trying to accomplish in their life. And not everybody's trying to be an entrepreneur, right? But, yeah. but people are trying to accomplish something. And whether that's to be a linchpin at their job, whether that's to be an amazing designer, which by the way, this is the gentleman that introduced me to you because he fell in love with your design. Um, so, or you want to be uh, a great baseball player. I mean, who knows what it is you're trying to accomplish, but everybody has that quest. There's something that they're trying to, to make come true. And then a lot of it beyond that is just stumbling around, right? And it's, it's I think a lot of businesses don't get started because people are afraid of the stumble or they, they have some delusion that the people that have been most successful somehow didn't stumble. And so you could only ever hope to be a lesser version of that person. And the reason your story is so awesome, man, is you've been so successful. And I really hope you guys will all go, go check out, at a minimum, this man's Instagram feed is, is off the charts. It's amazing. I subscribe literally just as a user. I just want to get the amazing quotes and stuff that you guys do are incredibly powerful. And then you have actually a lot of free content, which in researching you, I learned a ton about the mistakes that we're doing on Instagram ourselves and you know, some of the, the just sort of nuts and bolts lessons. But embracing that, I'm gonna stumble through the dark, right? That is going to be my path to success, regardless of what I'm trying to accomplish. Like if you look at me and you think I'm doing anything other than stumbling through the dark, even right now today, you're delusional. Now take that and talk to us about from a business perspective, how do you get really structured about the stumble? How do you get structured about uh, the experimentation? Yeah, well, it's, it's a tough question, to be honest, Tom, because for me, it's just like we just have to find what's working. You know, I'm, I'm a bit of a growth junkie, and 
uh, I love scale. And for us, you know, if, if it works, let's just double down on it. Let's just grow it as fast as possible. And How do you pick something to, like, what's something that you want to test but you haven't tested yet? I think we could probably get better with Facebook ads. Uh, right now, uh, we have an agency that does it, but I, the more and more it comes back to it, I think we probably should do it in-house, yeah. And so how does that mental process work for you as you create? So there's going to be somewhat of an infinite number of options, things that you can try. Is it gut instinct? Is it reading blogs about the topic? Like, do you go through a research phase to come up with? Yeah, a lot of it. Thing? Yeah, a lot of it's research and speaking to people. Another thing that I want to try that we don't do very well with is Pinterest. I think that could be a massive source for growth as well. So, yeah, this is, this is a really good question. So how do I find out what to try next? Where do I find out what to test? mainly from speaking to people that and if i hear enough people talking about it whether it's on podcasts or speaking to that person or reading about it then i just start we just go and then the next the next the next piece of that puzzle is finding people that are crushing it and learning from them mm. however we can i think that's very very key um Yes, we do test things. Yes, we do find out things ourselves. But a big part of it is learning from others as well. Massive. Um, in reading the stuff that you write and in obviously engaging with your podcast, you very much have this almost excitement over, I found somebody that I can learn from and putting yourself at their feet and really getting into the nuts and bolts. And what makes that so meaningful is it's action-oriented. And I think that, um, you know, Lisa Nichols talked a lot about this as well, is keep moving forward, right? So don't worry whether you understand, and, and Lisa was a guest on the show, and she talked about finding her purpose in 2% increments. Yeah, I thought, yeah. wow, that's really powerful, right? So it's not like um, the, the issue that you're putting together now, the issue one was already there, right? You, you evolve and you grow over time. And the willingness to sort of go through this and say, okay, I accept that whatever I'm gonna put out now is not gonna be as good as it could be, um, and when you said you're a growth junkie, that really resonated with me. And I know you meant scale, but I think you can apply that to just your own mindset, right? The books you were reading at the beginning, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, uh, The 4-Hour Work Week, all that stuff is, is really about um, growth hacking inside yourself, right? The, yeah. the mental framework that you need to have to go and be successful. So one of the things that you've done that I think is, is really important in your success is networking. Um, talk to us about how you approach networking and what are the results you've gotten from it. Yeah, so networking is really everything. I think it is, as Gary would say, Gary V would say, the game. I, I, I do believe that. Now, we're in Melbourne. That's where our HQ is. Most of the people that we interview, most of the people that have it going on are here in the States. That's why I'm here right now, Tom is I need to come here a couple of times a year and just catch up with people, just learn. And I think... How do you set those meetings? Like I'm thinking uh, of a kid in Melbourne right now going, how the <laughs> hell do you just show up at the airport and like walk around? Like, no, well, do do? look, um, a good way to get a lot of the meetings is to interview people and connect that way. And then another way is if someone knows someone, ask for the introduction. Mm. But before we get to all of that, I think a, a great core principle that people can have if they want to build and develop their network is serve first and ask later. I think serve first, ask later. So if you want to get to know someone or if you want to just start developing your network, just start helping people. Start helping people that you, you admire their work. Start helping people that not you don't expect anything in return um if you love if you want to meet other like-minded entrepreneurs start you know just meeting other people and always 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 from every single person you meet let me know if there's anything else i can do to help let me know how i can help and you know that that's constantly what i'm always doing just trying to help as many people as possible wow that's incredible so you've interviewed some of the most incredible names in business man it really it, even just looking at the people who've graced your cover let alone i'm sure the myriad more that you've talked uh to for other articles and things is is really astonishing what are some just critical life lessons you've learned from some of these people well thank you tom um <laughs> This question's really hard because 
I think if you want to talk about how I've really grown found it quite fast is because and I think we could have grown 10 times faster knowing what I know now it's I think because I just gained so much from all of these interviews and you know just speaking to incredible people like yourself and I'm asking questions that I want to know for founder that we can apply really selfishly sure. um, I guess one key one if, if I could think about it was I learned this from the founder of Zero Accounting. Do you know that software? I don't. Billion dollar SaaS company, um, online accounting software, crushing it. Mm. Um, the, the founder, the company was founded in New Zealand and the key thing that I took away from him was just urgency, speed of implementation. This guy, he was just like, Speed. It's all about speed. I just want to move as fast as possible. I don't care what people got in their way. Let's just move as fast as possible. My job is to get as many things as I can out of people's way, and it's all about speed. Speed and urgency. Speed of implementation. The most successful companies move fast. Like you said, around testing and iterating, we're just all about speed. Mm. And um, that was a big takeaway. Uh, another takeaway um, that I learned from the late uh, Dave Goldberg, who was... was the previous uh, CEO of SurveyMonkey, unfortunately, before he passed away, um, husband to Sheryl Sandberg. Um, He gave me a great piece of advice, and it was, uh, there's a lot of assholes out there, um, so be a nice guy, because he'll go a long way. Mm. Um, Those are a couple that come to mind. I've got so many, though. When you put me on the spot like that, Tom, I have to think about it. All right, well, I'm (laughs) going to put you on the spot again here. Let's see how far we get. Okay. so as an entrepreneur yourself, what are some key traits that you think somebody who wants to become a full-fledged entrepreneur should be cultivating in themselves? I think definitely the ability to push your comfort zone. You have to constantly be pushing your comfort zone. And I think also around just being a good person. I think if you want to be a successful entrepreneur, it's a big part. Like I know there's a lot of people that are supposedly cutthroat entrepreneurs and don't care about anyone, but I personally believe if you want to be a, a really savvy entrepreneur, you have to be just really a good person and, and treat people how they would like, you know, like how anyone else would like to be treated because relationships is key, man. Yeah. Like, you know, not just from networking side of things and speaking to other people, but also the people that you meet along the journey and, you know, even speaking to your customers, even speaking to, and, and hiring people, you know, that is so key. In the early days of starting your company and you're trying to grow it, the people that you put in your core team are the ones that can make or break it. Yeah. So you have to be prepared to just really get to know people and understand just I guess, you know, emotional intelligence, that is so underrated, dude. Just really knowing people, understanding people, understanding their motivations, I think uh, is so extremely key. Um, Another thing I think is really, really important as an entrepreneur is just doing things you say you're going to do. So, so key. If you do things you say you're going to do, and if you want to do it, you just get it done. Mm. You know, one thing my mum taught me is if you're going to do a job, you do it properly. Pretty simple, right? Yeah, I like that a lot. Those are some really foundational um, things to focus on. I think the social revolution really changed things in a way where being nice, being kind, being authentic, most importantly, uh, you can be rewarded for that. And you can connect and make meaningful relationships with people that you might not otherwise be able to. There's a level of accountability because mm. one offhanded comment, one bad dealing with somebody where you were a dick or whatever, like that can spread like wildfire. Mm. You know, and you see that all the time. So I think that's, that is incredibly overlooked, uh, but absolutely critical information. So what's next? So you're a man who tests, you're a man who optimizes. Uh, what are you testing and optimizing in your own life? I think eventually we'll probably be doing courses at scale. Um, I think that's that's where I see it going. Keep doing everything we're doing on the front end, but get really good at teaching and courses at scale. I think that's that's probably what the next two to three years looks like for us. And and double down on content like this show, like what you're doing right here, Tom. 
I think it's next level, dude. I think it's the way of the future. It's only going to get larger. You look at what things are happening with Snapchat, Facebook Live, Periscope, Blab. I believe that, yeah, we're just going to have to double down on video even more. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, the thing that I always come back to is value, right? So if it delivers value, then there's a big reason to do it. Like you, we're not romantic about how we pull it off. So if it's Instagram, great. If it's Facebook, great. And, you know, none of that really matters. We want to get stuff that really resonates with people. Um, but to pull that off, I think the core thing that people have to have is a mission. Um, would you say that Founder has a mission? Yeah. Uh, probably not as unique as yours, though. But right now, we want to help tens of millions of entrepreneurs. Like, you know, our mission is, is very, very simple, you know, to help entrepreneurs however we can to provide content that is game changing for people mm. uh, that simple as that you know at first it was to get you know our content into the hands of millions consumed every single month now it's in the tens of millions wow, that's incredible so tell me what do you consider the definition of a life well lived I guess uh, just doing what you want when you want without anyone telling you uh, that you can't do it Total freedom, as you said. Yep. Awesome. Nathan, thank you so much for being on the show, man. That was a lot of fun. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, Where can they find you? So if people want to find out more, uh, best place to go is just foundermag, F-O-U-N-D-R-M-A-G.com, or you can follow me on Twitter, Nathan H. Chan. And don't forget Instagram. What these guys are doing is absolutely incredible. And what I really, really hope that you guys take away from this is, man, you can be a self-starter. This notion of self-generated escape velocity. Escape velocity is very simple. It's the thing that gets you out of the orbit of the thing that you're in. So right now, you're all sucked down to the earth by something. And if you can create the energy in your own life to break free of that, then really you can do anything. And Nathan, his story is somebody creating that escape velocity for himself. He didn't wait for somebody else. He didn't wait for his mom to cheer for him or anything. He just went out and did it. And right now, there's nothing stopping you from going out and doing it. If you don't know what your purpose is, man, you can find your purpose. You can track that down. You can do the work. But anything that you put the work into, you can figure it out. It's not all gonna be handed to you in a neat little bundle, so don't worry about that. Take that Lisa Nichols 2% approach. Put your life together piece by piece until you find the thing that you were meant to do. Write down that mission and go after it with everything you have. And if you do it and you study and you practice and you pivot and you find what's working and you double down when you find something, you can have the kind of crazy success that this man is having. And doing it as a good person and connecting and being authentic and real will only magnify your efforts. So learn from this man as I know I have. What he's doing is absolutely incredible. Until next week, my friends, be legendary. Take care. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. I really appreciate it.